we begin tonight with in-depth coverage of the Ebola outbreak and the local response to the crisis. As Rhode Island health professionals squabble with state leaders over the level of preparation, we're tracking several new developments in the fight against the virus worldwide. Today, the 21-day quarantine was lifted for family, friends, and others in Dallas who had direct contact with Ebola patient Thomas Eric Duncan. None have shown any symptoms of the disease. The CDC is now revising its protocols for health care workers who treat Ebola, making them more strict following the infections of two nurses who treated Duncan at a Dallas hospital. And today, the World Health Organization declared Nigeria Ebola free. The virus was brought into Africa's most populous country by an airline passenger who carried Ebola from Liberia. In the end, Nigeria was able to contain the disease to just 20 cases and eight deaths. Now closer to home, the governor and local hospital administrators are responding to a new survey which says many local nurses do not feel properly trained to deal with Ebola in Rhode Island. Eyewitness News reporter Kelly Sullivan is standing by with more on today's national headlines. But first, let's go live to Eyewitness News reporter Susan Campbell with the latest on the local response. UNAP members say they want more training, they want more information, and they say they want Governor Chafee to step in. We are concerned. Many of Rhode Island's nurses say they aren't trained or ready to help an Ebola patient. Certainly, the frontline caregivers um, are are anxious. United Nurses and Allied Professionals surveyed its members and found more than 80% of the 359 people who responded feel less prepared or not prepared at all to accept and treat a patient who has Ebola. Only half a percent said they felt very prepared. Now the UNAP is calling for more communication and training. We have not had statewide drills. We have not had drills within our hospitals to test this uh, emergency. Today we asked Governor Lincoln Chafee and hospital administrators to respond to the union's concerns. I do think that uh, as many have said that have seen what we've done here, we're re really leading the nation in our preparation, but we always want to improve, of course. I'm very pleased that um, nurses are speaking up for themselves and for their colleagues to make sure that we are doing everything we can to protect our health care workers. We can always be more ready for something serious like this, but I feel we are prepared to adequately identify, isolate, uh, treat and protect our workers. We also reached out to Lifespan. A spokesperson tells us the safety of our nurses is paramount. We have been and will continue to provide intensive training for over 500 frontline staff who could possibly come into contact with a patient suspected of having Ebola virus disease. Both Lifespan and Care New England hospitals tell me they are constantly updating their protocols as the CDC updates its own recommendations. Now, coming up new at six, hear what healthcare workers think about communication at their hospitals. Live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Susan Campbell, Eyewitness News. We begin with an update on the Providence man who contracted Ebola in the outbreak in Liberia. Ashoka Mukpo could be released from the hospital by the end of this week if tests show he's free of the deadly virus. He's been treated at the Nebraska Medical Center since October 6. His doctors there say he's been improving steadily but remains weak. His parents have told Eyewitness News that Mukpo would return to Rhode Island when he recovers. Here at home, some of the state's nurses are looking for more training on how to deal with a case of the virus should it ever arrive. New at 6, results from a recent survey that polled one group of nurses on whether protocol had been explained where they work. Eyewitness News reporter Susan Campbell joins us now live at the State House in Providence. Out of 6,500 members, about 350 responded to that survey. Half of them say they haven't heard a thing about Ebola procedures or protocols at their hospitals. For weeks, hospital administrators, the Department of Health and Governor Lincoln Chafee have been saying Rhode Island is ready to deal with Ebola. We're re really leading the nation in our preparation. But many local nurses say that's not the case. United Nurses and Allied Professionals just released the results of a survey of its members. More than half who responded say they're not prepared at all to accept and treat an Ebola patient. The survey also asked members if procedures and protocols related to the illness have been explained in the hospital or facility where they work. About 3% said yes, 48% said yes, but not in great detail, and 49% said they've received no communication at all. The current disposition of our members reflects widespread concern, confusion, and a lack of confidence in the state's ability to appropriately ensure patient and caregiver safety. Eyewitness News asked hospital administrators at Lifespan and Care New England to respond. 
there's nothing so important to us as making sure that our workers who are putting themselves at risk every day, not just with Ebola, but every day as we're taking care of patients, that we do everything we can as a system to make sure that they are adequately protected. A spokesperson for Lifespan says the safety of our nurses is paramount. We have been and will continue to provide intensive training for over 500 frontline staff who could possibly come into contact with a patient suspected of having Ebola virus disease. In addition to more communication and training, UNAP members are asking for special protective gear. Local hospitals tell me they have all of the supplies they need. Live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Susan Campbell, Eyewitness News. Our coverage of the Ebola outbreak and our local response continues on the air and online. Go to our website for important information about the virus, including symptoms, treatment, risk of exposure, and prevention. It's all on WPRI.com.